Hi, this is Dan Carubia, and this is the Dan Carubia Show. And um, I want to welcome you here. And I want to thank again Dan Dave Harris for the opportunity to speak on um, the Yankees and the Mets and all the things that's going on with some of the teams in the New York City area. And, and we'll have eventually, we'll have some speakers on and uh, talk, just as I said last week, about how you got to where you are about liking baseball, liking sports, growing up mostly a little bit in New York City and or some of the other areas in and, a, and around some big cities and some of the teams that you might have watched growing up. And we'll also talk about minor league baseball and what's going on in minor league baseball and the independent league that uh, that are around. So I look forward to this. It's just the start of spring training. And yep, uh, the Yankees yesterday, they lost 12 zip. So what? They had some minor league players that were there. They were playing an away game and uh, that were part of the 40-man roster. But Peraza played shortstop. Uh, Trevino was behind the plate. Very good. Uh, Torres was at second base. And, and Volpe, uh, you know, he played a little bit. And you got to look at, at these guys now and see a little bit about where they're going to be. And that does, uh, does that open up some of the opportunity for Para, uh, Peraza to play shortstop? What happens to IKF here? And these are these little things that are going on in spring training that are really cool to look at. And the managers and the coaching staff have to put a lot of this together for the upcoming season. So that's going to be a little bit of a battle. Uh, does, does Torres play in second base uh, a lot? Does that open up maybe a possibility down the road of a, a trade or two uh, that Torres is involved in um, down the road? These are all these questions that are coming up. Uh, but the most important thing, I think, the Yankees in, in spring training and the, the WBC, uh, the World Baseball Clash that's coming up on March 8th is to avoid injuries. Now, we're going to look at, at Stanton, uh, who's had some injury history over the last many years. It's a possibility um, uh, with Judge, too. He played a great season last year, a very um, ongoing, uh, healthy year. But uh, Stanton might play the outfield this year for a little bit. And, and hopefully that, uh, that doesn't in, in include where, where he might get injured. But these are some of these things. All eyes, is no, all eyes will be no doubt on um, on Judge. I mean, 62 home runs last year. Uh, how he handled himself with class and, 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 and just playing the game. I know he had a tough playoff season uh, last year. And, and that was a, 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 maybe it was tiring and, and the pressure on him uh, that, you know, not only hitting 62 home runs, now producing the playoffs. So these are these little things between Stanton and and Judge that you, you want to make sure that uh, spring training goes slow for them and, and making sure that they're playing uh, with a little bit of just uh, getting their swings in uh, during the minor league sessions, maybe a little bit, a lot of BP, but, and then during the games. Now you got to look at some other things with the Yankees this coming year and the, and the, and the spring training games uh, with uh, Josh Donaldson at third base. Um, how he uh, tries to overcome last year and that terrible season that he had um, and coming over from Minnesota. Uh, so there, there's a little bit of things with Donaldson at third base. How long, if he doesn't start to hit um, it, that he was capable of in his past years prior to last year, uh, how long does, the, does these guys in Boone uh, keep him at third base? Uh, that will be a big deal thing here. Uh, can you fall back with uh, JT LeMayu coming back from an injury uh, towards the end of last season with his foot and everything? Uh, does, does Peraza move over there? Does, does um, somebody else, uh, you know, you, you'll look at Volpe. Does he m maybe move over into that area? Who, ha who will be there just in case Donaldson doesn't come through? And, and I think you need Donaldson here because – you're going to have a, 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 a very good, uh, experienced hitting process now that the shift is gone. Uh, LeMayu is going to get some great at-bats somewhere in the infield. Rizzo is going to be really good. He went to the opposite field last year a little bit, like McNeil did a little bit. 
and and will he start pulling the ball a little bit? He signed for a big deal contract and everything. So how does that implement now? When Rizzo starts to play, he's going to be playing low key a little bit in spring training, get his his self together. And uh, so you look at that uh, between Stan, Judge, Rizzo. These guys right there are going to be the boppers. And uh, you, you look at guys getting on base, you need Donaldson to get on base. Uh, you need Harrison Beta, who's going to be the, 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 the stalwart at center field. Can he come through and, and do what he did in, in the latter part of last year and come on and hit with, with some consistency and ongoing? That's going to be the big deal thing here. And, of course, you got uh, Cabrera. I mean, he was outstanding last year coming up from the minor leagues, both playing in the outfield and right field. Who remembers that catch that he made in the outfield and right field last year? And in the infield, is he replaced Donaldson or move around Torres if, if somebody would possibly trade for him? Does he go to second base? And, and, and you have, um, you know, these guys that are going to be big deal stuff between Beta and maybe Cabrera playing. And then you got behind the plate, you got uh, those guys behind the plate that are going to be doing good, Heisakawa, and and I think he's going to be good, and Trevino behind the plate. They'll be um, strong, um, and those guys have to get on base a little bit too for the big power hitters. So that's that lineup that you want to look at spring training, how they're doing, how some of the minor leaguers that are on the 40-man roster will initiate themselves when some of these guys are at the uh, World Baseball Classic. Um, and how does Cabrera come back? You know, you want to make sure that that he knows that the pitchers might be pitching him a little bit differently this year, a little bit, to make sure that from how he got hits last year, there's analytical stuff. So I think Cabrera is going to be really uh, a key to the Yankees and, and Bader as well. Now, unfortunately, with Montas going down, who he, you know, he got that middle trade, the middle of the year trade last year from the Cubs, going down for maybe two thirds of the year, uh, if if that's the better part of that. So, uh, but you do have, and I think the Yankees, this is their strong points as well. You got some good backups uh, for the Yanks this year, and I think that's the key to the strength of the Yankee team this year is their pitching. So who could maybe take Montas' place? My, my I like this guy, Herman, uh, Herman. I mean, he throws hard. He's got a little bit, he got lit up a little bit last year and he's not consistent. He had an injury, but I like him. Louis Servino, he can fight a rock, pump the seat and shoot the pill. Uh, Clark Schmidt with a new cutter, or with a new pitcher, the cutter that he was talking about. He had a good opening to his uh, uh, spring, uh, spring training year this year. So these guys are all around. And you got Nesta Cortez. I mean, that lefty, that's wonderful for him uh, to get cut by the Yankees, to come back by the Yankees, and have a stellar year that he did, a consistent stellar year that he had on the mound and pitching. And the key is Carlos Rodon to be signed by the Yankees. That's a big deal. And that takes a little bit of pressure off the highlight of the magnification of, of Garrett Cole. Uh, there was back and forth last year. He got ticked off a little bit with people waiting to, to start the game and everything. There was a big deal thing about that. He doesn't have to worry about that. So they, they have a, a, a good starting staff. Um, and, and I think with, with uh, Radon there settling in uh, and, and really giving um, – uh, Cole a little bit of less time on on as far as the microscope being under him, and and I think Nestor Cortez will have another good year. Can he have a good a better year than last year? Um, my opinion, no. Just be steady and consistent on the mound. Give the team six innings on a consistent basis. Keep the team in the game like he did last year. That's perfect. And um, um, now who's the closer for the? For the Yankees, uh, Clay Holmes, yeah, I guess he will be. Uh, but but that opens up to that in case, you know, he pitches a couple games, you got Trevino, you got Loisica, you got uh, King there. So uh, Jose Trevino, Kyle Hawagasha, these are these 
guys that I think are going to be the strength of the Yankees. Uh, we look at you know the power hitting teams of the uh, of, of the team itself between Stanton and Judge and and, and Rizzo, like I said before. Uh, but I think you'll want to look at how the Yankees are going to do. It's going to be on the mound, and it's going to be how they do things. Um, you know, I said between uh, Trevino and Hashigawa, they have good quality catches. They work well with these pitches. They know them. You've got good defense behind the plate, and, and you've got good defense up the middle with Beta uh, in center field, and whoever, maybe Pagaza playing shortstop. IKF, he's got to come through. I mean, that's a guy that I think um, – Watch for him in spring training and how he hits, how his defense is. And and they're not going to wait around a lot because, you know, Peraza, he, he had his, you know, the, up at the end of the year, he did okay. Uh, so let's see what happens. And then possibility of a trade or two, uh, as I mentioned before, could um, Torres be that possibility? Maybe. Uh, you, you have to look at certain things that are going to be strong for the Yankees. So, uh, as you watch spring training, uh, keep into consideration that, um, you know, the WBC, um, and let me make a comment on that. Uh, just my opinion. It's garbage. Sorry. Um, it's nice that these other guys, they go play for their teams, uh, wherever they grew up, uh, the nationality, it's wonderful. But when you have a new rules change this year, when you have new players on each team, that have to get acclimated to their teams, to the catching, and so on and so forth. You, you're going to see a situation where, uh, and injuries, like I said last week, I'm concerned about that. These guys are going to go full boat at this WBC. And to me, you don't need it now. You need spring training. You need guys that are going to play with you, with the teammates. You're going to have them breaking in slowly. Watch how these pitchers are going to throw 94, 95 miles an hour right off the bat. And I'll give you one thing. With this WBC, take um, all the players that play in the WBC that are playing in Major League Baseball. Look at their averages from the start of the season in April to, let's say, the middle of August, the 15th of August. Then take the 15th of August and go on to the end of the season and see if they average the same as they did in the couple of months, April, May, June, July, and August, and half of August, and see where they are. There's going to be a tiredness that's going to come over these plays. And do they get tired a little bit during the season so they have to sit down a couple of games in a row? Do the pitchers have to do that? That's going to be a key this year. And I want you to watch that because the WBC is going to take, in my opinion, is going to take a lot out of some of these plays, especially on the mound. Then there's no time clock. There's no rule change there. Then they're going to have to come right back in and get acclimated to this time change. Uh, time scheduling, 15 seconds on the mound, 20 seconds when the guy's on base. So you're going to see this. So let's look at it from that standpoint and just keep your eye open for that because that's going to be, a, 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 a to me, a turning point in the seasons and how well these guys come out of this from the 8th to the 21st, I guess it is, uh, this WBC. So that's odd on that. The Mets, they lost yesterday. So what? They're 2-3, and three, big deal. Uh, the big deal thing was Carlos Quintana, uh, Quintana was blasted. Four hits, five runs, two-thirds of an inning. He said he was off a little bit. He wasn't involved there right away. Watch his next start. But you know what? Uh, don't forget, he's going to the WBC. Here's a pitcher that's going to pitch with the Mets first time, and he's going to go to the WBC with the new rules change. He might have one more start maybe before he goes there. Maybe he'll throw an inter-squad game, whatever. Watch him carefully. And I think it's terrible that he's going to that uh, WBC. So who else is going on the Mets? The whole freaking infield is going. Diaz is going. The new catcher, Navarez, is going. Oh, yeah. Take two weeks off and, and catch other t team pitches and everything else. Forget about working with your pay players now in spring training. You got two weeks and then you're off and you're back again for another couple of days. That's garbage. That's what I think. And uh, But you know what? It'll open up some opportunity here uh, for some of the younger Met players. Uh, Brett Beatty, uh, that's going to be good. He's hitting the ball. Uh, could he be looked at um, down the road 
watch how he does in spring training now. This is a strong hitter. And um, Francisco Alvarez, you know he's going to hit. Uh, he's got to catch uh, on the defensive side, as a lot of people have said. Uh, could he be the Mets DH down the road or right away from spring training, which I hope not? Uh, let him get acclimated again into Syracuse uh, and AAA and let him catch, let him learn the game behind the plate. He's still very young. It was terrible, that, in my opinion, that they brought him up to, to open up that series against Atlanta, that crucial series in, in, in uh, September. Um, Mark Vientos, whoa, watch him. And, and, and Roddy Machado, that, that's, he was the MVP of uh, the Dominican League this summer. He's hitting the ball. He hit a home run the other day. He's got a couple of home runs so far. Uh, Mercurico, I'm sorry. And, and watch him play. These guys right here can fit in realistically to the Mets this season. But I don't think they should start the season at all for the Met roster, uh, for the 26-man roster for the start of the season. They should be in the minor leagues, get them more uh, experienced, see how the guys are doing there. Uh, Escobar at third base, he better hit uh, like he did in spring train at, at the end of September of last year. Uh, otherwise, maybe Beatty could replace him sometime not too far in, in May or the beginning of June. But Escobar is a key there for the Mets infield, and he's off to the WBC. Very good, you know? so. A lot of these um, starting players for the Mets will probably be playing up until maybe uh, the end of this weekend, and then they're off um, to that tournament. Uh, the Met pitching, um, Max Sergio, he looked outstanding the other day, and he got a little bit to this time clock, and he, he had a play a step out on him, and then he waited up until 18 seconds before he pitched because there was a guy on first base. Uh, this guy is um, key. He's right looking at it. The only problem is, again, um, age and see how he does. And Verlander, he's going to open up uh, spring training either Friday or Saturday on the hill for the Mets. Another guy that's old. And, and these are the guys, I'll talk about that in a minute, um, that you have to watch. But coming along, I, they're not going to that tournament. Uh, Sengea, Kodai Sengea. Uh, the new player that they got from Japan, he has to adjust or he is adjusting to uh, the mound from here to where it was in Japan. He has a really good breaking ball, high fast, uh, good fastball in the high 90s. He's got this fork ball that he's using, but he's really got to get used to this. I think he's going to pitch sometime this weekend. He is the key guy. You, you use him as your third man in the rotation. And off of these guys, and this guy's going to be tough. Uh, no, most probably they will break up Valander and Scherzer a little bit. Uh, maybe they could put Carlos Carrasco or somebody there, uh, and and along with uh, the Japanese player uh, Segea, Segea. So um, you you watch on that. Um, you you have in the back of the rotation in case of something in need here. David Patter, Peterson, who pitched very well. He pitched two innings the other day. Very good. Tyler Miguel, uh, maybe John Curtis. Uh, so these guys are important to the Mets. And I think, in my opinion, this is where you have a six-man rotation starting around in June or July, where you, where you sit down these guys for a, a week. Let them get back into the – because you got the quality backups between David Patterson, uh, Peterson and, and Miguel. Uh, so you, you look at that. The bullpen is strong, I think, from uh, the starting with the closer, Diaz, who's going to the World Baseball Classic. Uh, uh, David Robinson, who's got experience with many other teams. Drew Smith, Casey, is back now. Uh, could he go up and back and forth? He's had an arm injury last year, so he's going to come back slowly. This is where you have to look at that. Uh, Aventado, Aventado is, is going to be um, good for the long um, man in the bullpen a little bit. Maybe Miguel could do that and Peterson as well. So you have some flexibility in the Mets bullpen. Uh, but the key is Diaz, and he had such a wonderful, wonderful year last year. Strong. Uh, if he could get close to duplicating that, 
that's fine. But you also have to make sure that he's rested and he's not used over the so much in the beginning of the season. Could somebody come out of the bullpen like David Robinson and, and replace Diaz once in a while? I hope so. I hope they use him that way. So you got good catching behind the plate with uh, Omar Navarez, who's off to the WBC, and, and Nito. Uh, Alvarez, work, as I said, work on his strengths in, in the minor leagues for right now. That's where you need to have him. And, and you know, some of these guys like Nemo in the outfield, he's not going to go to the WBC. Good for him. And he's coming slowly into spring training. It's going to be a tough year for him. Uh, obviously, he's going to be a lot of pressure leading off, playing defense. He can do that. Kahana, uh, realistically, play left field. Uh, he was talking about hitting home runs. Let's see how he swings. Put the bat on the ball, and then the ball will go over the plate, uh, over the fence. Don't lift and drive all the time and think that you got to hit a home run, my opinion. Uh, Marte is coming back from an injury. Uh, and, and this guy's got to be slowly pushed into spring training very slowly. He is the key in right field. Marte will be there if he's not injured. I think he's going to be really uh, a good setup. Uh, you can always use McNeil in the outfield if you needed to in left field. Uh, Tommy Pham coming over from uh, uh, on, a, uh, in a, on a free agent deal. He can play left field and right field, maybe a little bit in center field. So he's got the Mets flexibility in the outfield. That guy, Ruff, um, it's going to be rough on him if he doesn't hit in spring training. Watch how he does in spring training. And they got to play him. With the Mets guys going to that tournament, you got to play him a lot to see how he does. And then a DH, you got Rogelback, uh, Vogelback, who lost uh, 15, 20 pounds, 21 pounds. Uh, maybe he can lose another 10 pounds. See how he's swinging for the fences. Just put the ball in play. Go to the opposite field. Get guys on base. That's what last year and the end of the year in, in, in the playoffs, they weren't able to do. And get guys on base, a guy on second base, get them in. Guy on third base, fly ball, get a run scored without striking out. These are these things that the Mets are going to do that needed to be done. And um, I think realistically, as I said last week, in my opinion, um, the Mets are, everybody's talking about, hey, they're going to win first place. No, I, I look at the Braves uh, to come in here and, and be strong again. They signed a lot of their young ball players. Uh, the Phillies, what a tremendous acquisition they did by getting Trey Turner and Tejon Walker. Uh, Hop, uh, Hop is going to come back probably mid-May. They're going to be a strong team and the big winners in the offseason on this as far as trades are concerned, signing free agents. Obviously, the Padres, Bogarts, Seth Lugo, they signed Marty Machado now for 11 years for $350 million. He sets that sign. I'm glad he signed by the Padres because there's the breaks down a talk with the Mets and, and Cohen maybe signing him next year and putting pressure on Beatty or something like that. Let these young guys come up for the Mets. Long term, uh, you know, they were in the Mets signed some good free agents, but they didn't sign Carlos Correa on that. And I think that's a good deal thing. Let him do his thing in Minnesota. The Yankees with Radon being signed, re-signing Rizzo and Judge. Yeah, the Rangers, the Grom. Let's see how many innings he pitches before he gets injured. Possibility. Uh, Corey Seager, uh, Seaman. Uh, Marcus Seaman, those guys really will add the strength. And uh, Rocker, who, who pitched for the Tri-City Valley Cats last year after the Mets did not sign him, Kumar Rocca, um, that's going to they, – they're going to have a strong team. And the Cubs with Dobby Swanson, uh, Jamison Tylon, and, and the big deal thing is Corey Bellinger. Uh, see where he if, – if he can go back to where his talents were with the Dodgers, it's a little di bit different hitting in, in Wrigley Field. So these are these strong teams uh, that made some really good acquisitions during the Winter League. Those were the, some of the powerful teams that they did. So um, with that in mind, we'll talk in, in the next couple of weeks or a week or so about all these new rule changes, see what's happening. The other day, they didn't use umpires for the bottom of the ninth inning. Teams wanted to play. The umpires walked off the field. 
Some guy was uh, on the Braves was thrown out because he didn't get in the batter's box right away with a guy, winning run on uh, third base. You know, these are these things that are going to be happening. One thing, I was just curious about this, and maybe somebody can answer this for me. I'm up at bat, okay? Guy throws me chin music. I fall flat on my butt, okay? Catcher catches the ball. He goes to, didn't go to the backstop or anything else. Throws it back to the pitcher. He's on the mound. This guy's got seven seconds to get back in the batter's box, okay? So he's on the ground now. His helmet falls off or something like that. He's got to dust himself off a little bit. And he's got to do it in seven or eight seconds before they call a strike on him. Watch what happens now if something happens like that. And and the guy gets knocked down or something and he, he's got to dust himself off or, or something happens to him. He's got to get set a little bit. Watch what happens on this. And and it's going to be very interesting to see some of these little little things that happen in the game. Uh, we'll, but we'll talk more about it next week. So to you guys and ladies who are listening, and thank you very much. Uh, it's on to another week of spring training. Um, see what happens now as the players leave for the WBC. See who's strong, who's uh, working their way back for a lot of different aspects of things. And the New York Rangers, Kane, hey, they got him. This is the guy. He sucks up with Panarin now. This is his buddy there. See where he comes into play for the Rangers up front. They got all the forwards that they need in these trades now. Uh, they got good goaltending. And uh, let's see what happens uh, with the Rangers. Get, and that's going to add a lot of uh, prestige to the Rangers. But that guy better score when the playoffs start. And he better be hooking up with Perrin if he needs to do that or some of the other players. Get used to him for the next couple of weeks. But when the players are here, this is what you got the guy for, period. End of conversation. So uh, Rangers are on. Islanders, uh, they can't score. They lost in an overtime shootout last night. Still can't score. We'll see what happens. Brazil is out. How long he's going to be out, who knows. But uh, that's New York sports. Anyway, this is Dan saying have a good week. Take care of yourselves, and we'll talk down the road. Yours in sports. Let's talk sports. Dan Carubia off.